Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Colgate Tooth Powder for a Breath That's Sweet present the Judy Canova Show with Mel Blank, Ruby Dandridge, Verna Felton, Joe Kearns, the Sportsman, Opie Cates and his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. <laughs> A boy met a girl at a railroad station Their trains were an hour late And over a cup of coffee He begged her for a day She looked so demure and shy And then made this reply why don't you look me up down in Chichi Hachiwachi? Chichi Hachiwachi, my hometown. Why don't you look me up down in Chichi Hachiwachi? It's a sleepy little, creepy little, wonderful one horse town. You gotta get a train for Waku Waku. Time to catch a bus for Taboo Taboo. Better bring along a little bale of hay, cause you'll have to ride a mule the rest of the way. So why don't you look me up down in Chichi Hachi Wachi? I'll be watching and waiting for you. Why don't you look me up down in Chichi Hachi Wachi? Chichi Hachi Wachi, my hometown. Why don't you look me up? Down in Chichi Hachiwachi It's sleepy little, creepy little, wonderful one or sound You gotta get a train for Waku Waku It's time to catch a bus for Taboo Taboo Better bring along a little bale of hay Cause you have to ride a mule the rest of the way So why don't you look me up Down in Chichi Hachiwachi I'll be watching and waiting Yes, i wait for you Well, an exclusive horseback riding and picnic supper party has been arranged in Brentwood. Handsome Benchley Bosford will be there, and Judy is all excited. As our scene opens, Judy is talking to Aunt Aggie. Aunt Aggie, I'm going to hang Benchley's picture up next to Van Johnson. Oh, men, men, men. Judy, when you hung up Van Johnson's pictures, I told you not to use nails. Aunt Aggie, I don't need nails to keep his picture on the wall. My heavy breathing does it. <laughs> And you know, I feel the same way about Benchley. Here, look at my hope chest. Hope chest? Why, Judy, that's only a cigar box. It's not much of a chest. Chuck's never had much hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm telling you right here now, if I play my cards right at this picnic, Benchley might ask me to marry him. Oh, Judy, wouldn't it be wonderful? Oh, I can see you now, going down the aisle, wearing a dress with a long train. No, no, my dress ain't gonna have no long train. Why not? Once I start heading for that altar, I don't want nothing around my ankles holding me back. <laughs> By the way, Judy, have you done your shopping for the picnic? Yeah, and I get I'm plump wore out. I guess it was a mistake to let the neighbor's dog carry the meat home for me. If the dog helped you carry the bundles, why are you worn out? Well, I've been in the backyard all afternoon digging for pork chops. <laughs> Judy, that's ridiculous. Besides, at that exclusive picnic, pork chops will never do. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe I'd ought to get a chicken. A chicken? Oh, yes, that would be nice. Uh, do you want a pullet? Chucks, no, I'll carry it. <laughs> Remember, dear. Remember now. It's important that you pack a nice lunch. Yeah, because the men are going to bid for the girls' lunches, and I want Benchley Botsford to get mine. Oh, then you should fix something appetizing, like um, Limburger cheese souffle. Limburger mm -hmm. cheese? Yes, it's easy. You put it in the oven at 350 degrees, leave it in for 45 minutes, and forget it. Aunt Aggie, when you put that kind of cheese in an oven, you can't forget it. <laughs> hey, Miss Judith, look at this package you brought home. Well, what's wrong with it, Geranium? Well, I unwrapped it and unwrapped it, and there was nothing in it. Oh, Geranium, that was a roll of paper towels. 
Oh. <laughs> Golly, I say, I must be getting absent-minded. I guess that's because I got a letter from Pomeroy today. You did? What'd he say? Well, they're sending him over to help occupy Japan. But Pomeroy would rather have his old civilian job back. He ain't in favor of occupation. What was his old civilian job? No occupation. <laughs> I sent Palmer a picture of me in my new dress, and he says it makes me look graceful as a greyhound. <laughs> you mean the kind you bet on? No, honey, the kind you ride on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better get back to the kitchen. I got a stew sitting on the stove. Well, let him set there till he sobers up. <laughs> Geranium, never mind putting the fork in a spaghetti bowl. Put in an egg beater instead. Okay. An egg beater, Judy? What do you need that for? Well, Aunt Aggie, when I eat spaghetti, I gotta have something to wind it with. <laughs> Pardon me for talking in your face, Senorita. Oh, hello, Pedro. What's on your mind? Well, Senorita, I'm worried about my cousin Roberto. He doesn't stop running around. His wife is going to leave him. That's too bad. See? He sure is going to miss her. <laughs> Senorita, I tried to elope with my girl last night. Still don't get it. You did, Pedro? Neither do I. See, <laughs> I put a ladder up to my girl's window, but her father caught me when I was halfway up the ladder. Golly, what'd you do? What could I do? I painted the side of the house. <laughs> Senorita, I like to neck with my girl. She always says her kisses will send me. Do they? No, I'm too smart to go. Tasty manana, senorita. A tasty banana to you too, Pedro. <laughs> Gosh, Aunt Aggie, I wonder if Benchley likes going on a picnic. Oh, yes, I hear he loves to. He loves to? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's even better than going on a picnic. <laughs> Oh, there's the phone, Aunt Aggie. I'll answer it. I ain't afraid of them things no more. Howdy. This was your idea, so start talking. Miss Canova, this is Brenda Laverne. Where I come from, when we pick up a phone, we say, are you there? It's much simpler. Oh, I reckon you're right, Brenda. You say, are you there? Then if there ain't nobody there, there ain't no use going on with the conversation. Is <laughs> I called to tell you, Miss Canova that you're wasting your time with Benchley Bobsford. You're not at all in his class socially. Well, Chuck, are you? Indeed I am. I was born in a mansion at Bar Harbor. It's a real show place. Chuck, yes, that ain't nothing. They put a plaque on the house I was born in. You ought to see all the people stop and read it. Really? What does the plaque say? Rooms for rent. <laughs> say, tell me, how do you figure on winning Benchley? You can't fix a picnic lunch. Perhaps not. But I baked a lovely fig pudding for him. A fig pudding? Shucks, that won't get you nowhere. I baked a fig pudding for a bunch of fellas back home once. Didn't they like it? No, they kept asking for dates.
was Ann Canova playing her interpretation of the St. Louis Boogie. Remember this message from Colgate Tooth Powder. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Scientific tests prove that Colgate Tooth Powder, in seven cases out of ten, instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Money can't buy a dentifrice that will clean your teeth better than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Well, it looks as though Brenda Laverne is going to give Judy a run for her money at the forthcoming picnic. As we look in on her now, Judy is talking to Aunt Aggie. Golly, I sure wish I was a pin-up girl like Brenda Laverne. Pin-up girl, pin-up girl. Judy, I am sick and tired of hearing about pin-up girls. Yeah, me too. What I'd like is a man I can pin down. <laughs> now, Judy, you mustn't let Brenda give you an inferiority complex just because she has beauty and a fine education. I suppose she know, you know that she got her B.A. and Ph.D. at Vassar. Oh, shucks, that ain't nothing. Back in Cactus Junction grade school, I got an A.B. and an S.A.S. A.B. and S.A.S.? What's that? Absolute bonehead to say after school. <laughs> well, anyhow, I finally graduated and I got my sheepskin. Oh, your father must have been proud when you brought home that sheepskin. No, he wasn't. He looked at the sheepskin and he says, I bet they gave the smart kids the meat. <laughs> say, Miss Judy, Miss Brennan LeBurn is in the living room. Shall I show her in? Yeah, Geranium, you show her in and I'll show her up. Okay. Well, Miss Canova, I must say you're wearing an odd writing habit. Are those supposed to be jeans? Jeans? Chucks, no, everything I got on belongs to me. <laughs> you know, we're having a riding contest at the picnic this afternoon. Have you done much riding? Well, no. The last time I went horseback riding, every time I said get up, the horse backed up. When I said back up, he went forward. I must have been a very stupid horse. No, it wasn't his fault. I was sitting on him backwards. <laughs> well, I'm sure Benchley will be impressed with my fancy riding. By riding at full speed, I can pick up a handkerchief with my teeth. You know, I tried that once, and I almost had to pick up my teeth with a handkerchief. <laughs> After the horseback ride, Miss Canova, the men will bid for the lunches we packed. And the finest lunch will attract the most eligible man. Yeah, I know. You know, the quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So I put delicious molasses cookies in my lunch. Yeah, but molasses is kind of slow. I baked a hasty pudding. <laughs> Here, you want to taste one of my cookies? Thank you. Oh, my, it tastes terrible. Benchley won't like these. You left out the baking soda. Oh, that don't make no difference. He'll have to take that later anyhow. <laughs> well, Miss Canova, I'll see you later. I'm warning you, I have my cap set for Benchley, too. And remember, opportunity knocks. No, it don't. It parks out in front and honks the horn. <laughs> Say, Geranium, I got to pack a lunch and brush up on my horseback riding. You got to help me. Honey, I can't ride a horse. The only horse I ever rode was a draft horse. A draft horse? Yeah, I couldn't get a volunteer. <laughs> you know, Geranium, I want to cook something super for the picnic. I think I'll bake me a snow cake. A snow cake, Miss Judy? How do you make it? Well, first you take a pound of ice and cover it with molasses. Mm. Then you put it in the oven for 20 minutes. For 20 minutes? Then what? No cake. <laughs> I sure want to look my best tonight, because after the picnic, we're going to play Pony Express Post Office. Yee! Pony Express Post Office? Say, hey, what's that? That's kissing by slow stages. Oh. <laughs> I ain't in no hurry anyhow. I ain't going nowhere. Yeah, I know that game too. You know that, honey? Yeah, you're kissing paws. Then you're kissing paws. Well, the fellers can kiss me, but they better keep the paws to themselves. <laughs> Pardon me for talking in your face, senorita. Oh, hello, Pedro. Did you get the car ready to drive me to the picnic? See, si, and I fixed the front fender so they won't get bumped up in front anymore. Oh, good. You did? How? 
They put him in back. <laughs> Pedro, you probably ruined them. You better go and put them back where they belong. See, I will go now. I hope something I shouldn't be doing wasn't what I did, and if I hadn't been doing it when I wasn't, then I can prove it. Mrs. Judith, the Count de Montfort is here to see you. Ah, my chérie. My petit enfant, vous êtes très charmant ce soir. Vous êtes très magnifique. Je t'adore, je t'adore. Shut the door yourself, Count. <laughs> How'd you get in here, anyhow? Oh, Sherry, I love you. Doors cannot stop me. Walls cannot stop me. Nothing can stop me. Only your face. <laughs> is on my mind. <laughs> Say, are you going to the picnic, too, Count? Oui, Sherry, oui. Oui, not me. I'm going with somebody else. <laughs> you must go with me, Sherry. Oh, by the way, tell me, how do I look in my cowboy outfit, huh? Well, I count, there ain't no seat in those woolly trousers. But, Sherry, these are cowboy shots. They are built that way. Shucks, for a minute I thought France was being liberated again. <laughs> Tell me, why'd you come over here anyhow? Oh, I came here to offer a bid on your picnic lunch. Oh, Count, I don't want to sell my lunch to you. Oh, Sherry, I will start the bidding. I offer you one franc. Never mind, Frank. Just bring on Benchley Bosford. <laughs> no, Sherry, the Frank is French money. I want to start the bidding. Have you never been to an auction? Just one time. I did some bidding on a parrot once at an auction, but somebody kept raising the bid. Yes? Yep. I bid $20, somebody else bid 25 Then I bid $30, somebody else bid $35. But I finally got the parrot for 50 bucks. Hmm. Could the parrot talk, Sherry? Could he talk? Who do you think was bidding against me? <laughs> so interested in me. Oh, because your face reminds me of the stars in the heavens. Really, Count? Like the stars? Yes. Your eyes are like Jupiter. Your cute little nose is like Venus. And your mouth is like seven lovely stars strung together. Count, you get out of here. Now get out. Oh, but surely, I only said that your mouth is like seven stars. Yeah, I know. It's a big dipper. <laughs> Now, here's Judy to sing a little song for you. I was wrong, dear, when I left you. Oh, I was wrong to turn you down. Never dreamed how much I'd miss you. Till my head started spinning round and round. Oh, I was wrong to say goodbye. Never thought you'd make me cry. Oh, I found out since I've been gone. You were right, little darling, I was wrong. I was wrong to ever leave you. You're the only love I've known. I was wrong to ever grieve you. Take me back in your arms where I belong. Oh, I was wrong to go away. Please believe me when I say, Oh, I found out since I've been gone. You were right, little darling, I was wrong. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring two out of three women a lovelier complexion in just 14 days. Women with dry skin, oily skin, rough skin, young, older. Yes, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, have proved the 14-day palm olive plan improves all types of skin. Just do this. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Each time, massage your face for 60 seconds with palm olive lather. Then rinse. Do this three times a day for 14 days. This cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive's full, beautifying effect. Remember, doctors prove the palm olive plan can bring two out of three women a lovelier complexion in just 14 days. So get palm olive soap. Well, Judy's in the kitchen with geranium preparing a picnic lunch she hopes Benchley will bid for. 
Golly, Geranium, when Bessie Boxford tastes this cake I baked, I bet he kisses me and just won't be able to break away. Why, honey, your kiss is that good. No, but I'll have marshmallow frosting all over my mouth. <laughs> Gee, when Bessie comes over here on his way to picnic, maybe I can keep him all to myself. You mean keep him away from Miss Brenda? Honey, how can you do that? I'm going to sprinkle myself with some of this new perfume. Boy, it sure affects men. Yeah, what kind of perfume is it? It's called Atomic Bomb Number Five. <laughs> One squirt and they flirt. <laughs> Why, when I bought it, I had to sign a paper releasing the store from all responsibility. My goodness, Miss Judy, look here. What happened to that rice pudding you was making? It's all burnt up. Yeah, I can't understand it. I did just what the recipe said. Yeah, what did it say? It said, bring to a boil on a brisk fire, stir for two minutes, then beat it for ten minutes. Then what? Shucks, when I come back in ten minutes, it was burnt to a crisp. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> kind of silly, ain't it? <laughs> Hard-boiled eggs would have been easier to cook, but there wasn't any eggs in the hen house. Yeah, but this dude, I heard those chickens cackling. Oh, that was a false alarm, Geranium. What do you mean, false alarm? Well, if a hen cackles when she's setting, she's laying. But if she cackles when she's sitting, she's lying. <laughs> Gee, I sure hope Benchley likes my lunch. Gosh, maybe that's Benchley now. I'll answer the door. Hello, who are you? <laughs> Hello, remember me? I'm Walter. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. You're the new fellow who moved in at the head of the block. Yeah, that's me, Walter the Blockhead. <laughs> hey, you want to know something? Eh, uh, you appeal for me. I do? Oh, shucks. I bet you're just saying that. Oh, no, I like you. Hey, I even bought you a picnic lunch. I packed it myself. What I mean, I... I packed it. <laughs> you did? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I had to sit on it to get the lid closed. <laughs> I shouldn't have put that pineapple in there, though. Um, look, I, I got a malted milk for you. Where? It's right here in my pocket. A malted milk in your pocket? Yeah. Hey, that's funny. It was here a minute ago. <laughs> Gee, I told that fellow not to make it so thin. <laughs> Well, I, I gotta go to the picnic now. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go to, to the picnic. I... Well, I hope you have a good time. Oh, I will. I, you know, I like horseback riding parties. Last time my horse kicked me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, could we have laughs. <laughs> Gosh, everything happens to me. I wonder how he got by Winchester, the butler. Oh, Winchester! Oh, yes, Miss Canova. How did that fella get in the front door? Oh, well, you see, his entrance was so precipitous, I was unable to remonstrate with him. Huh? You see, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't cognizant of his imminence until he had placed himself in a juxtaposition to the vestibule by his ambidextrous manipulations. Is there anything else you'd like to know, Miss Canova? Yeah, how did he get in the front door? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Canova, I heard about your date with Mr. Bosford. You think he likes you? Well, Winchester, I ain't sure, but every time he sees me in a sweater, he says, Oh, boy. See, I wish I looked more like a girl. <laughs> Miss Judy, Mr. Bester Boston is here. Oh, hello, Judy. My, but you look wonderful. I do? Yes, if I do say so myself, you and Lana Turner and Betty Grable are sisters under the skin. You know, one of my other fellas told me that, too. He did? Yep. But he told me to crawl back under the skin and send out one of my sisters. <laughs> Say, Benchley, are you ready to bid on my picnic lunch? You mean before the other fellows have a chance? Why not? The Count already offered me one franc. Oh, but it wouldn't be fair. I have too many scruples. Scruples? Say, don't either one of you fellas got any American money? <laughs> Judy, you're so naive, so cute. I could love you. You could? Yes, Judy. I could love you terribly. Well, come around when you've improved your technique. <laughs> you misunderstand. I know a thousand ways to kiss a girl. Would you like to learn a few? A few, Chuck. Show me a whole bunch. <laughs> oh, Judy, you say such cute things. For two pins, I'd grab you and kiss you. 
Well, here, take these. My hair always comes down anyhow. <laughs> Gee, Bensley, why do you want to kiss me? Well, kissing is a natural expression of love, Judy. Now, look at those two lovebirds in their cage, billing and cooing. Why can't we do that? Well, do you think there's room enough for us up there? <laughs> Uh, Judy, when the moon is high tonight, we'll have a wonderful time at the picnic. See, Benchley, I can't go to the picnic and go horseback riding. That's why I want you to bid for the lunch here. Well, why can't you go horseback riding? Well, you see, I had a little accident today of baking bread. I put in the flour, the yeast, the salt, sugar, and shortening, and then I guess I must have misunderstood the cookbook. What do you mean? Well, the book said, set on stove until the bread rises. <laughs> well, what happened? I rose before the bread <laughs> Well, folks, now that the war is over, we're all going through a period of reconversion. Some of us won't have as much money as others, but not having as much money as the next feller ain't so bad if you don't spend what you got trying to prove you got more than him. Besides, you can't buy happiness with money anyhow. You know, I, I get a lot of happiness just singing a little old song my mama used to sing to me. Go to sleepy little baby, go to sleepy little baby. When you wake, you patty, patty cake and ride a shiny little pony. Daddy's coming home, baby. Daddy's coming home, baby. Stop your crying, daddy will be buying you a shiny little pony. Hush by the little baby, by and by the little baby. Daddy's gonna be home with you and me, then you'll never be so lonely. Go to sleep, you little baby. Go to sleep, you little baby. When you wake, you patty, patty cake and ride a shiny little pony. Rock a baby in the treetop. When the wind blows, the cradle will rock. When the bar breaks, the cradle will fall. Down will come, baby, cradle and ball. Hush, by the little baby, bye. Baby, daddy's gonna be home with you and me. Then we'll never be so lonely. Oh, go to sleep, little baby. Go to sleep, little baby. When you wake, you patty, patty cake and ride a shiny little pony. Go to sleep, little baby. Go to sleep, little baby. When you wake, you had a very great and ride a shiny little pole. This is Vern Smith asking you to follow the 14-day palm olive plan for a lovelier complexion. And don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder night and morning and before every date. You know what, ladies? You did a grand job of saving used cooking fat, the fat that helped grease the wheels of victory. But your job isn't over. Secretary of Agriculture Clinton P. Anderson says, VJ Day still leaves us alarmingly short of fats and oils. And so you are being asked to keep on saving your used cooking fat. It's needed now for the wheels of commerce. Needed in the production of refrigerators, vacuum cleaners, irons, alarm clocks, woolen goods, cottons, nylons, baby carriages, and soap. The list of goods that call for fats in their making is endless. So keep on saving fat. Fill a tin and turn it in. Your butcher still pays four cents a pound plus two red points. Now, here's Judy. Folks, it was awfully nice being with you tonight, and I hope we'll all be together again next Saturday night. In the meantime, please don't forget the two products that bring us together each week, palm olive soap and Colgate tooth powder, the bestest in the world. This is Judy Canova from Hollywood saying, Good night, soldier.